So if you weren't aware, today was OpenAI's dev day and they came up with quite a few things to talk about. They have their new agent builder, which is a visual canvas for breaking down multi-agent workflows. And with here, you can simply drag and drop what you need to create your agent workflow. You can also create widgets as part of that workflow. You can talk to your apps with inside ChatGPT. So for here, I quickly made a presentation within Canvas and it created this slide deck for me about Crew AI and how to install and set it up. And of course, Sora 2, their new video model, and there's actually also a Sora 2 Pro. And I'm going to show you the code for that because it's not very intuitive and they're and as far as I could tell, they're, at least their Python library is not up to date, but I will show you how to do that. Okay, so I figured that maybe we just go ahead and start with how Sora 2 works. So first off, they give you the code, but like I said, the OpenAI library has a part of, part of the package is for videos, but I just tried updating it as of today, after the dev day, it didn't work, but I was able to get the HTTP requests. And so through their API, you can create the video, you can remix videos, you can list all your videos, retrieve your videos, so you can pull it for when it's done, and then finally actually download it. Now, as far as I can tell, you're gonna use Sora 2 is the model you're gonna use for kind of like, uh, if you wanna see what it could look like, because it's cheaper. Sora 2 Pro is when you get the best, uh, best uh, visuals for what you want. It's gonna produce the best output, but it's also way more, like about five times more expensive. Um, so then also you can do four, eight, or 12 seconds. And then if you're doing with Sor the regular Sora 2, you can do up to 1280 by 720, and you can do a higher resolution with the pro version. But like I said, it's about five times more expensive. And if you're really curious, so here's Sora 2, it's 10, se 10 cents per second, whereas Sora 2 Pro, well, at least Sora 2 Pro, if you're doing the same landscape, is three times as expensive. If you're gonna do 1792 by 1024, it's 50 cents, five times more expensive per second. So that's $4 just for an eight second video. Hopefully it's, the, it's what you wanted. And again, all of this code I'll have in the description below. Um, it will be in my free community that you can go ahead and use this. All you have to do is you'll basically just have to replace it with your API key. And I just kind of have the hard, I had the prompt just kind of hard coded here, but you could you know do something with that. But how it works is let's go, well, let's just go ahead and run this and I'll show you as it's working. So how it works is it's just going to create the video with a request and then it's going to pull it every 10 seconds to see whenever it's completed. And most of the time it's going to be in progress. I think the last one for a four second video for a vertical form that took, that took roughly about a minute. So this could take a couple minutes. I'll come back whenever this is done. Uh, actually, as of right now, it seems that the connection isn't working. I literally just tried this out on a different resolution. So let me just show you the output that I got. So I got a generated video.mp4, and this was actually of the previous version where there's a calico cat playing the piano. Now for what everybody really probably wants to know, and I can't, I'm gonna give you my thoughts, right? That's the other thing, I'm gonna give you my thoughts at the end. But this is not going to kill any den, okay? This is this isn't killing Make. It's not killing Zapier. Like it's it's not right. This isn't the same as those platforms, okay? Those platforms you can you can have AI, you can have AI agents in them, but this isn't the same thing, okay? I, I've seen so many, uh, you know, even from yesterday, I just saw so many posts like even from people that have a lot large following. It's just, oh, this is the killer. It's going to do this. This is this is going to be the end of some of these other platforms. And no, it, it, I'm not, I mean, I can't predict the future, right? But it's not just, this is to help build your agents that you can integrate as part of whatever it is that you're building, okay? Now, they're not saying they can't have some automation, but it's not the same thing. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. It's not the same thing. So with the agent kit, they had an agent builder. Okay, this is the visual canvas that everybody believes is replacing every other no code platform. Okay, so then they also have ChatKit, which is a toolkit for embedding the chat based agent experiences in your product. Okay, they're doing this, this is based off of the responses API and the agents SDK, which came out earlier this year. It has been improved. Okay, as with everything, um, everything that brand new, right? They're going to be there's gonna be some things that maybe don't work as well. They're gonna improve it, but let's go ahead and take a look at this now. So if you go to uh, uh, if you go to platform.openai.com docs, you go to Agent Builder. You can open up Agent Builder right here, and you will first. If this is your first time, you know you might be agree with, agree with the screen like this. This is a very this is a very simple just triage kind of thing that you can build. But here on the left hand side, you have all your basic core components, some of the tools 
the logic, and then just some data things, right? So you, you when you start here, you have a query. This is an agent to rewrite the query for the classifier. It's either going to be Q and A, fact finding, or anything else, right? So if you have an if else, you can add multiple to the routes to the correct agent. So here we have an internal Q and A agent. And then what I did is you can add guardrails, right? So here, if I click on a node at the top right here. This is called guardrails. This is the input text coming in from the previous if one. Uh, you can tell it, hey, I want your, your PI data, PII, personally identifiable information, like account numbers. You know, I want to make, check for that, check for it, moderate it. And then, you know, whenever it's done, we're going to have an agent that is basically going to check for information about uh, whatever it is that we're asking and then make sure it retrieves that successfully and outputs it to out, outputs it to the customer. Okay, so when you come in here, you can preview this, right? So you can preview this, preview this at the top, so with the preview button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test this workflow. So say, can you tell me all about the pricing for your vacuums? Now, this isn't, you know, I don't have any, Thing set up so it actually has this data about vacuums. But this is just a preview to show you what this can do. So right now it's going through the uh, query rewrite agent. You know, so now the classifier agent, this is called fact finding. It went through the, you see, went through the guardrails, it passed, and then it's, um, you know, then this is going to go through some other information, right? So now it's just saying, can you provide the current pricing for all blah, 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 right? Because I don't actually have anything in here. So what we're gonna do, this is just showing you a quick example. Let's go ahead and make our own really quick. Okay, but let's go ahead and just create our own. So here at uh, platformopenai.com slash agent builder, you just choose agent builder, even though there are other things, we're gonna choose create. Now here you just greet it with your main, this is just the starting canvas. So we have start, and my agent, this is default agent, gives you the default model, reasoning, effort, you can choose more, for verbosity, summary, whatever, you know, outputs. Um, you can use chat, stuff about chat kit, which I haven't really gone over yet, but for tools, you know, we can choose, um, we can choose like MCP servers, file search, web search, code interpreter. Let's just choose web, choose web search. I'll just say USA, just click add. Everything else is optional. This is just to test. And then from here, if I want to, I can, after the research agent, I can click create a new node, choose guardrails and just make sure the moderation is okay. Okay, and then how to actually test this before we really do anything is at the top there's a preview button. So now we can just uh, test what this would be like. Okay, here, and after that here, it gives me an, uh, something officially live from OpenAI Dev Day today and just going to kind of give some information about this. Okay, so this is the actual output from here. Okay, so now what I wanna do though is let's look at widgets. So there is a widget builder and so what I've done here is I just asked it to create a simple widget called customer answer. And what you can see here is that it gives um, that it gives you some code that you can use. And how this works is we can download this. So you can download this or share it. Then I'm back in the agent builder, let me close the preview. Instead of the whenever we come in here, what I can do is for the out, what you can do just to make this simple is for the research agent, here for the output format, instead of text, you can choose widget and you can add a widget and you could go just click create, which would take you to the widget studio, or you can upload one that I, the one that I had just showed you really quick, going to upload this here. Okay. So now the output output format is going to be the customer answer. So now let's go ahead and preview again. Okay, and so what happened is whenever it's done, instead of just getting that, just getting that monstrosity, it's actually gonna put it into a card like this that we had created, right? So it has the requirements. Now this isn't like pretty looking, but this is something, a sample of what you could do. I would probably, ha I would probably have it like put it into a very short summary. You could do that with another agent, right? But it's just to show you that you can have widgets uh, as part of an output or certain parts um, of this agent. Now let's talk about how you can interact with your apps within ChatGPT. Okay, so what's gonna happen is they, in the open AI dev day, they displayed like Zillow, Canva, you know, I think there was bookings.com and there were a few others, right? But let's just talk, I'm, I, I have an example of Canva, so let's just do that. So how it works is you're gonna type in Canva, Canva, 
And now as you can see it opens up, it has actually has the app now. So what I can say is beginners. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to make them. And then it, this is going to take, this is going to take a minute, right? It, it's not the quickest. So it's going to take a minute. It's going to create these. And then, you know, we didn't have to do anything. And I'm going to show you what it can, what it looks like actually in canvas uh, or in Canva. Sorry. I don't know why I keep saying Canva. Canvas is the agent builder. Canva is the, is the product. Um, so I'm gonna show you what that is and we'll be back. Okay, so here are here are some of these slide decks. Let's go ahead and view them. Okay, so here it just, you know, it just kind of gave some basic slide decks. You know, we can definitely give it more and you know, a different a different style. But I mean that literally took a minute just to get started with a slide deck um using the app inside of chat gpt okay so let's briefly talk about chat kit so this is a way to build and uh, customize embeddable chat with chat kit so, so that you can use for your application so it's the best way to build agentic chat experiences for open ai you know whether you're building a knowledge assistant onboarding helper research companion etc okay so there are basically two ways to implement this so the recommended way is to embed chat kit in your front end using the agent builder which we had just talked about the other way is to use it on your own infrastructure you can use the chat kit python sdk but you know i'm definitely not going to get into that right now that'll be for a separate video so basically how or what you're going to do is you're going to create your agent workflow wor workflow which we already did and then what you would do is you would set up chat kit uh, in your product. So you could either create a fast API service or some sort of service as a backend to that, that your front end will interact with, which is show, which is actually showing you right here. This actually, they actually uh, create or have the base skeleton code for a fast API service using the, their uh, Python SDK. And then in the server side code, you're basically passing in your workflow ID and secret key to that endpoint. But what happens is the front end code fetches the client secret from the server and mounts a live chat widget connected to your workflow as a backend. So now what I want to do is just talk about, let's just talk about the dev day. Okay. And what maybe this means. Okay. So I think for, you know, for people that really just use, maybe, maybe a lot of people use ChatGPT, right? This would be great right you're gonna have the canva is the canvas is simple you know it, it take a little bit to get used to i'm going to create a course on that within probably hopefully a week and show you like all you can do or what all you can do with it but it is simple and it'll be for people that are already here and then chatting with some of the applications that i've shown you and i'm sure they'll add more you know it's going to make it uh it's going to make it more easily accessible okay so that's one thing number two is this is not going to replace like i don't believe at least initially, it's not going to replace what everybody thinks it's going to replace. Okay, this is an agent builder. This is not some sort of no code automation framework, okay, which you would see with NADEN, Make, and Zapier. Okay, those are capable of doing way more things. This is an agent builder. Okay, this can be a part of a flow for your application or for something that you want to do. All right, but this isn't just going to just hard replace something. Okay. And especially, you know, whenever the, uh, the swarm agent framework came out, you know, people said, Oh, this is going to be amazing. This is going to do this and that it, it, it didn't, it literally, eventually it became open AI SDK, which we know now, but at the time they literally said not even to do it. So whenever something comes out, you know, it, it does, it doesn't mean that it's, it's going to be great yet, or it's going to be used by people. You know, I've heard, I've seen people say that they love the front, they love the, the UI of Canva and it's, and it's, it's not bad. But I, by no means do I think it's this amazing thing. I think it'll obviously be, they're going to get a lot of feedback now. You know, it's open the floodgates, they're going to get a lot of feedback. And I think that's, that's good to improve the product. Now, with that said, I do think it's, like I said, I think it'll be great for people that want to use open AI. The one thing about all of this is that you are stuck with the GPT family of models. Not everybody wants to do that. Also, with any den, for instance, you can host it locally. You can't host this locally, of course, right? So there are some things with this. So uh, obviously, if you want to have like your private data locally hosted, not really pay, maybe only pay for the the tokens that you use with whatever model you're using, then you know that's it. But you you can't really get that with this. Okay. Also, Sora two, kind of expensive. I just came up with a video about Wan 2.5 that came out cheaper and is also really good, you know, and also Google Veo 3, if you want, is also really good. You know, I saw two from the things that they showed 
yeah, great, amazing. I'm not saying it's for, for what it is, especially with the audio, great stuff. But, you know, it's also not expensive in, I mean, it's not cheap. It is kind of expensive, especially for what I've seen the output for the standard Sora 2, like the actual quality of the video, you get 12, you get 1280 by 720, you know, that's okay, right? It's not like, you know, it's nothing amazing. The night, the, when you, when you go to Sora 2 Pro and you go to the higher resolution, yeah, you're going to get much better output. But like I said, $4 for an eight second video. So, uh, you know, do with that as you please. Everything, the SDK has been updated, you know, great. You know, I think that I'm, I'm happy that they're relying more on the responses API. And I think that it can be used more often, but again, that's for coding purposes, nothing necessarily to do with people who want to stick with ChatGPT. Okay. So overall, I think this is, you know, this is great for them. And I think it can be really good, especially with the slide decks. You know, I like Canva, but I don't like, I'm not a designer. I like putting time into it. So I can be able to chat with things within ChatGPT, which I do use, you know, it's great, right? I do, I do like that. And I want to explore the canvas more as an agent builder, but also Korea, I just came out with their AMP, their um, agentic, their agent platform. So we'll see how they compare and we'll do a video on that also. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, but this was great stuff. Like I said, I'll have the code for this for you. If you want to uh, deal with Sora too, I can't believe that I tried this out before, right before the video between dev day and making this video uh, on the day of dev day and all of a sudden it didn't work at one point. So, all right. Thank you for watching. Here's some more videos. I'll see you soon.